Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the What Did He Said podcast. It's your boy Chingo Bling. Boop, 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 boop. And your girl Marisol. More energy, Marisol. <laughs> Más energía. Más energía. It is day. We have no clue. We, we don't know what clue, what day well, you know of what's the funny quarantine. Is he, here's the thing you're, you're talking about. You don't know what day it is. So I had been posting. A, I was trying to post a vlog for like literally the day that it kicked off that we were going to start having to stay home, right, where we couldn't leave. Mm-hmm. So I did good. I did day two, three. And then I went four, five. Uh, so day six, seven, eight, and I think nine, I forget. I think we're on 10 now. I'm not really sure, Mm -hmm. but let's just say all those days will now have to be combined in one vlog because I just stopped posting because I was like, shit, what day are we on? What? Wait, uh, is this Tuesday? Well, when you told me it was Friday the other day, I was like, it's Friday. I couldn't believe it. I don't even know what day it is. Well, today's Monday. (laughs) And uh, we've been going live every day on Facebook. Uh, that's been fun. It looks like people enjoy it. So if you haven't gotten a chance, go check that out. And uh, we're, we also mentioned the podcast when we're over there. So let's just get the whole party together. But uh, we just did a workout today because there ain't shit else to do. We went for a walk already because there ain't shit else to do. Isn't it weird, though? Our schedule is so different now, yet I still feel like we're staying. We're still so busy. I feel like creating content is just as busy as preparing for a tour, but not as hectic where I'm running around doing the errands for yeah. it. But I feel it's just as hectic because mm-hmm. it's like planning. And when you have a kid, don't forget. Well, yeah, because we have no babysitter. I mean, we always talk about it on the podcast about how, you know, when Luisa arrives, it's like, go. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Get all the shit you need to get ready to do because we only have Luisa for X amount of hours. Yeah. In this case, we only have my sister. She only gives us, what, like two hours? Right. Yeah, about two or three, two to three yeah. hours. She's done to do more, but we don't want to take advantage of that either, you know, because she's been willing to help us it's out. Like, Girl, it's a quarantine. You ain't got nothing else. to Yeah. Do. And so, uh, you know, she gives us a few hours and and, you know, it is what it is. Uh, you know, one thing that's funny is that I've um, what I've learned is um, that Penny doesn't really have structure. <laughs> OK. And so I'm trying to figure out how to give her structure because she knows a routine, but there's no structure for her. She doesn't know that. She knows that in the mornings, right, Mm -hmm. she gets up and she gets to go for a walk. And she knows that, right, because she knows I got to get her ready. She knows that her diaper gets changed, Mm -hmm. you know, and she's fine. Have you noticed that the last couple of days she's told me, BB? Mm. Popo. So she's telling me getting ready. I'm hoping I'm about to save money on diapers. Yes, I'm hoping that this is the start. So my goal, babe, um, from here to the time, hopefully this ends or really from here to her birthday, because it's only three months away. Oh, Isn't yeah. that crazy? Mm-hmm. I'm hoping she's potty trained by two. my mom's birthday is like next week. Yes. Or like in two weeks. So we're going to have to do the same for her. Drive by. Yeah. Burp, burp, burp. Um, but anyway, um, it's crazy because I. I'm trying to find some kind of structure for her to where uh, she knows that is this time it's for walking time. This we do her lunch every day at the same time. So that's probably the only thing that she has down in the morning. It's the evenings that I haven't. Mm -hmm. Should I just like let her play? Is it like, dang, bitch, not everything got to be structured. Well, (laughs) well, we get Mickey tomorrow. So um, I think the more structure, the better, the more routine, the better. Um, Definitely like I slept pretty good last night how'd you sleep last night because uh scott adams hypnotized me yeah he hypnotizes you every day yeah he just saying he does a a nighttime where he checks in nighttime his little nighttime periscope and podcast and he literally tells you like you're gonna get good sleep tonight picture my voice counting to 20 you know what i mean so anyway back to routine um morning routine gotta be on point you conquer the morning you conquer the day nighttime routine is gonna dictate how you feel the next day mm-hmm. you feel me because like your sister i hear her complain all the time she's like oh tia i didn't sleep last night and i was like hey question do you make to-do lists in your bed she's like yeah all the time she's like before i went to bed i was worried about because she had this international job first right well, she's like i'm worried about uh columbia and then the employee in london and then i'm like damn you're taking well all right that. now she's stressing about if yes or no she should take the job in boston uh-huh. right because they want her to leave and so she's stressing about like this coronavirus, is it safe for me to do this? Mm-hmm. Like, what the fuck? What if I catch the corona okay. when I land to, to um, Boston? Then, you remember, she was like, 
I have no family. Who's going to help me? I'm like, uh, no, ain't nobody going to help you in Houston if you got the coronavirus because can't nobody be around you, you know? like Coronavirus. Ain't nobody going to go well, over there and help well, you. Well, here's the thing. If you're going to worry about this job offer in Boston, don't worry about it in bed. Yeah. Don't lay in bed watching a scary, uh, tense show while having a cell phone light in your face while you're making a to-do list and you're worried about shit. Now your brain is associating entertainment, anxiety, and worry all with your bed. So now your brain is like, oh, I'm laying down and watching a movie. This is a time where I can be up and energetic because I'm being entertained. Yeah. So the more you watch TV in bed, your brain starts to think like, oh, it's bedtime. It's time to l- well, toss and Well, this is the turn. first place that you and I, that we have, that we well, since we've been living together. Or, I mean, I shouldn't say that. It sounds like we're not about? married. Going, You're saying about this entertainment in bed. I'm yeah. going to the subject that you're talking about, okay. Pete. We've never used to have a TV in our bedroom in the past. This is the first house that we have oh. where we put a TV really? in the bedroom. We didn't have one in Wheeler, ah. and we didn't have one um, Rosewood? on Rosewood. Interesting. Huh. So we never had TV. I could have swore. Okay. No, we only had the TV in the living room. No one had. And then we only got a TV for Mickey because we were tired of watching, almost like the same situation we're in right now. We're tired of watching Penny's stuff. So then that's when we decided to put a TV in Mickey's room. Remember, we got her that TV so yeah. she could pay, play DVDs and so forth. Nintendo, and then uh-huh. she had her, her TV in, the, in, the, in her room, mm-hmm. and then we had the TV in the living room, and that was it. But we never had yeah. a TV in our bedroom. This is the first house that we've had together that yeah. we had a bed- Man, TV. Yeah. And for the longest, we never watched it in our room, Pete. Mm-hmm. We always used to watch it in the bed in the living room. Uh-huh. Always. The TV was actually for decoration for the longest. It's been here recently since the quarantine. I, I say that we've been watching more of the TV in our bedroom together since the Rona. Yeah. Well, uh, well, anyway, the, the point is, is, um, you know, with the quarantine, one of the things I want to get out of it is just a tight routine to where, like, I know that. This is what works for us. This is what works for me. Everything else got to fall around this. You see yeah. what I'm saying? Because sometimes in your career or work or business, sometimes people request, even just in life, like um, family gatherings or someone's birthday or this or that or an event or someone, your second, third distant cousin is getting married or whatever. And it's like, oh, but that's starting to get, that's going to throw off. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm going to sound like an old fart, but like, if I'm home and this is my home routine, well, now I'm going to have to go across town, kick it with y'all, make it home at this time, and now it's going to fuck up my morning. And you, you see what I'm saying? What do you miss most right now? From, Fr- from, from before the from quarantine? Pre. Uh, I would say, uh, let me think. Okay, good question. Um, Obviously, your, your freedom to just go and do whatever, although I am enjoying the quarantine. I would probably say like, like, squ- like real squat, like real squat rack, I'll actually be able to like actually bench press some. So weight. you miss the gym. Yeah, like so that's actual, me too. Uh-huh. I miss the gym because for me, even though I've been doing these home workouts for all my patrons, for me, my motivation comes at the gym. You know what I'm saying? That's actually where my my creativity juices start to flow is when I'm at the gym working out. So for me, even though I'm back here doing videos for folks. I honestly like they don't have any idea. These people of that watch my videos, they probably uh-huh. think like, man, she's so badass. She just finds it in her. No, <laughs> it takes everything out of me to be able to do these videos at home because I don't get the same motivation at home that I do at the gym. When I'm on my way to the gym, I'm preparing my. Dun, 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 yeah, like dun, dun. I'm playing my songs in the car, like the, the music I want to hear so that it can pump me up for the gym. I'm already starting to think about what my workout's going to be. I'm looking at my workout book, like okay, like my little journal that I keep like, huh, OK, I'm going to do that body part. Should I do these exercises? I like look at my previous workouts. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I'm like really getting in, in the mood. So I like really prepare myself. And right now it's like. Fuck, man, come on, get with it. You got this. Get this workout in. You need it. Your body needs it. You're not, you have, honestly, to be honest with you, this whole quarantine, there's no reason why no one should be losing weight. Yeah, I mean. Because you should be walking like shit, walking like, like crazy. crazy. Um, and first of all, like, <clears throat> it's, it's almost like before you even get in the gym, it's almost like, hold on, man, let's let's see what your pull-up game is. Like, can, how, can you do air squats? Like, Let's just jog first, you know, yeah. how your pull-ups, you know, 
um, your abs. Like, first, let's do a whole bunch of core before we even get to the squat rack and the bench press. Does that make sense? Yeah, but, those um, are some things that I, I, I'm going to say I miss the most um, is being able to get to the gym. I actually miss working out with Sean. You know what I'm saying? Like, I looked forward to uh, having whatever. He, and you know what's crazy is you know me better than anybody. Mm-hmm. You know that I do not like having a trainer, but Sean, I didn't mind going to <laughs> because I just always felt like he knew how to keep me uh, like, oh, I, I know that this is something that they would like. You know what I'm saying? Like he always made it challenging and I always felt stronger when I left. Mm-hmm. And I think that's so important mm-hmm. when you leave the gym. When I work out, that is always my goal. When I go by myself, it's like I need to feel accomplished like I hit it I hit every part I did it I'm here and you know I felt like I accomplished something and I felt challenged I always feel like if you don't leave that way from the gym or your training session with whoever it is that you work out with if you don't feel like fuck that was a good workout I'm exhausted you know what I'm saying Mm -hmm. I always feel like it wasn't 100 percent you didn't give 100 percent yeah <clears throat> yeah, so uh, we'll figure. So out. what I'm getting at is everything you should be doing right now during this quarantine should be at a hundred percent, whatever it is, mm-hmm. because you have no excuses right now. There's not like there's another distraction right now happening to where it's like, oh, you have no excuse. Yeah, you know. And that's what I'm getting at is I'm just trying to like really just tighten up time management because it's one of those things where like you don't want the quarantine to go by and it's like ah, you still didn't write that book or like you still didn't edit sit and edit that footage and I finally come out with that documentary like you know those types of things so um like I was telling your sister earlier like you know I'm I'm trying to narrow down like what systems like what goals like what what exactly because I know we're going through the motions like we're going live every day you know we're still podcasting every week we're still trying to you know streamline and make videos and get the editing you know we uploading files and going back and forth on Dropbox on different things and songs and all this crap. Uh, like I, I recorded some vocals actually here on mm-hmm. this mic and I had to like, we transfer them to the engineer. Uh-huh. So we still trying to get stuff done, but uh, I don't want the quarantine to go by and be like, you know, I did, I was still procrastinating. Well, I challenge all our listeners to actually come up with something like think about something you wanted, you've always wanted to do and come out semi good at doing you know, or at least know how to begin whatever it is that you want to do. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, like, t- so tell us about it. Leave us a message. Hit up 409-233-3459. That's the official number to the What Did He Said podcast. Uh, one more time. That's 409-233-3459. And leave us a message. Let us know what you're doing during this quarantine. How are you staying busy? What are you doing with your kids? Um are you driving each other crazy yet? Everyone always asks us that if we're like driving each other crazy. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I'm going to have to start pressing record about 10 minutes earlier so y'all could just hear firsthand. <laughs> but um, but yeah, no, we're, we're surviving. We're staying positive. Same shit I've been preaching, man. Like stay prayed up because, you know, God forbid you start to like shit the news just starts getting scarier and you have to be careful you don't catch ptsd coming out of this thing like don't let them stress you to death don't let them scare you to death like you know stay on top of your shit well you want to know something babe Uh uh-huh speaking of this ptsd thing okay um i haven't been really checking my dms on my instagram Uh just because we've been kind of like busy and stuff but someone told me like uh, thank me for being so positive all the time. And she says that she'll go back through my Instagram to see old uh, quotes, quotes uh-huh. because she says that she's a single mom of three. Um, and because of this whole quarantine thing, the dad, I guess who whoever the dad of these kids are or whatever, he's a truck driver. Mm-hmm. So he's still an essential. So he's working. So all the, you know, all the work, load is on her and she's not working okay because her job wasn't essential right Mm -hmm. anyhow so she's saying that she's trying really hard to stay like sane for her kids per you know for her kids and herself Mm -hmm. and she's like i just can't seem to find that motivation to keep just like being positive like anytime i see something negative like instead of telling my kids positive things 
I actually sit there and tell them all the negative shit that there is that's going on mm. about the about the quarantine. <clears throat> it's like because she's like, I feel like if I sugarcoat it for them, mm. it's like they're not I'm not being honest with them about mm. what's really happening. I'm letting them think that it's not a big deal. And then they don't understand because she feels like if she if she's t- telling her kids it's going to be fine. You're mm-hmm. going to be fine, which we are going to be fine. Right. Yeah. But if she just keeps telling her kids that she, what I gathered from her message was she feels like um, if she keeps sugarcoating things to her kids, they're going to not be cautious in the future. Mm. They're going to not think, oh, they're going to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. This whole germ thing <laughs> situation is not going to be, be a big deal. So she says she doesn't lie about like, the deaths that are the de- the amount of deaths that are that are happening. She says, um, I tell them that we can't believe everything that we see on the news. She's like, we all know that the news, um, you know, exaggerates at times. She's like, so I just tell them, like, all we can do is pray for the people who are passing, mm. pray for the people that are that are ill and hope that they come out of this. And they just need to focus on their schoolwork. And that's it. Because she said a question that her eight-year-old had was, are my friends going to die? Oh, wow. Because of everything that's going on. So then at that point, she felt like maybe she had gone too deep into the conversations Mm -hmm. to where maybe other parents are not having these conversations with their kids. This is what the parents should do. Tune in to the What Did He Said podcast. (laughs) Because we want to give you the tools. That's like a great topic where you just brought up. Like, how do you manage your kids? Like, how do you how do you communicate what's going on to your children without a putting a bunch of fear in them to where now you traumatizing them or B the fear of sugarcoating to where you're thinking like they're not going to be careful or whatever. But um, I mean, I think that was good advice. Like w- w- what they said, like, we're just going to pray for the people. But at the same time, we know what we need to stay on top of Wear your mask. <laughs> you know, and so she was saying that she, what she tries to do is on her own little time. She's like, I, I'm honest with them. But then on my own time, I tried to like do the same. You know what I'm saying? Like try to tell myself all the negative things mm-hmm. and then try to find all the positive in them in the things that are happening so that I don't start to feel like cause she said she was starting to feel like fuck we're all gonna fucking die and mm. or we're gonna catch this disease or like, the economy is gonna kill us so that's why i mean <clears throat> this is what happens too so is uh politicians get pressured by like the media and the public yeah to for example cor- all corona deaths will have a name and a story right all deaths of the economy Like if we just let the economy come to a scratching halt and we just break it because everyone's mindset is negative and we break the economy and then we can't piece it back together. All those deaths won't have a name, won't have a story because they won't be associated with a a, a virus. You see what I'm saying? It'll be like, oh, well, this person was malnourished, malnutrition because their dad was laid off and the mom's de- industry went away and the economy was fucked and it was a great depression and that kid died of a disease that could have been avoided but because they were so poor you see what i'm saying mm-hmm. those deaths won't have a name or a face or a story so what ha- my point is this the decision makers that are trying to decide how do we keep the economy going how do we open it back up is it possible that some people can't go back to work first um that's what they're having to wrestle with. But because they're getting pressured to, hey, man, we don't, the public doesn't like seeing deaths with a name with a face. So they'd rather kill the economy to have less names with a, a face and a story. You see what I'm saying? Mm. It's like a political choice. Like, if I fuck off the economy and let people die that way, I won't be blamed. But these corona deaths, everybody's looking, everybody's counting. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm. No? I didn't, I mean, I wouldn't. Wait, you, is this Did your you opinion or is, no? I, I oh, didn't okay. miss it. I'm asking, oh. is this your opinion? No, this is. I'm ba- processing everything you're saying. No, it's like people that I follow on Twitter, like like people that said early they need to close those fucking flights from China. I know what I'm telling you. Or this no mask thing doesn't make sense. Please keep wearing your mask. Like we probably like this advice from the World Health Organization doesn't really make sense. And then later they start finding out. Oh, they're influenced by China. Oh, wait a minute. 
Italy's death numbers are high because China was helping them. Like, oh, wait a minute. It might have been a, an employee from a lab in Wuhan that wasn't getting paid well, and he took the bat and went and sold it because as a trinket or something in the market. You see what I'm saying? It's just a crazy chain of events. But um, um, You know what's even crazier is that as time goes by, I know they keep saying that we haven't hit peak yet, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And my thing is this, <clears throat> almost like you're saying, uh-huh. So who is going to be the first who can go back to work? Who has a job when this is all over? <clears throat> OK, well, what, what some people are suggesting is, number one, they're finally going to start checking the DNA of the people who um, that got it. And di- no, 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 I guess you're not understanding me. Who so gets to go, go back, back to work? To work. So are you going to get tested? I'm about to tell too? you. I'm about to tell you. Oh, uh, t- are they going to test you first? Cause, I mean, some of us don't know if we have it because we're at, you know, you know, okay. we, not everyone's getting tested. Okay, well, look, what, what I was saying earlier about checking the genes is we're slowly going to have more information as to, oh, are you type whatever, then you're good. Mm-hmm. So we've been waiting on the government to give us some kind of plan, right, that says, like, all right, here's a one sheet. Go to this website. It's going to ask you ten, qu- however many questions, yes, no questions. Mm-hmm. Um, are you over 50? Yes, for example. Are you female? Yes. No. Whatever. Have you? Do you have diabetes or do you have uh, asthma? Do you have this? Check. Check them off. And then at the end, it's going to give you a score, and it's going to say, "No, you're high risk." You know, we don't advise, or based on your age and your uh, prior history or whatever, you can't go back. You're still too risky. All right, you're gonna. I'm sorry to interrupt, what's up, what's but up, you're gonna up? have to chat for a little bit. My sister just uh, came back from Walking Penny, and she needs help with the okay. stroller. Well, cool. Uh, I'll keep talking about that. Um, again, leave us a message. What what were we saying exactly? Because that just threw me off. Oh, people going back to work. Uh-huh. Yeah. So uh, so hopefully, um, you know the the uh, what's the motherfucking tour? The going viral tour, which you know I'm laid off from right now. Everything's you know the Rona, the Rona done shut down everything. So God willing. You know, um, Chingo de Mayo, we might bring that back in a different format. We might be a Michilala contest in September. You know, we don't know. We might have to wait till 2021. You know, it's it's a May, it's a May event uh, traditionally. But uh, the going viral tour, um, a lot of the dates are postponed. You know, perhaps we do just a whole relaunch. Um, I don't know. But uh, one thing for sure is that. This situation is transformative. So a lot of industries are going to hit get hit hard. A lot of businesses, a lot of industries were not set up for this. They're not going to be able to adapt. They're not going to be able to innovate. So it's going to take a lot of businesses out the game. Um, a lot of businesses are going to have to change how they do things. Some some places that used to maybe rent, uh, lease a spot like in a strip mall, they might want to just focus online. They're probably like, man, it ain't even worth signing this three-year lease, thousands of dollars of of overhead and rent every month, and you know. Uh, but uh, like we mentioned in the last episode, we started reading this book called *Deadliest Enemy*. It's by a gentleman. Uh, his last name's hard to hard to pronounce, but he's um virologist. He's basically like a virus detective. So, you know, when AIDS hit the scene. When toxic shock syndrome hit the scene, first it was just cases. They're just looking at cases. Like, what is this? Why are people dying? What are the symptoms? And where else is this happening? What are the cities? And just investigating, like, the toxic shock syndrome thing, which is a, uh, uh, it, it, it's something that women get sometimes from the heavy-duty tampons. Now, that's scary because that affects that affects not only ladies, but, I mean, I mean, fellas, you know, we all have moms, sisters, wives, daughters, and um, it's unfortunate that these products, they just come with a little warning label, right? And if you're not careful, basically what it is is the stuff that they use to make those um, those tampons or whatever, it it creates like a, like a chemical reaction type of thing, and it basically releases the oxygen, and, you know, that area... It's supposed to be anaerobic. It's not supposed to be no oxygen up in there. And that's how you get 
the the bacteria that I guess lives off of that oxygen, and it all it stems from the use of some heavy duty tampons, and and they could lead to like cervical cancer and toxic shock syndrome and just a bunch of fucked up shit. Um, but anyway, the, in this book, homeboy goes into detail like. They start interviewing these ladies. What are these symptoms? What's going on? What is this? What's causing this? And somehow they they notice like, wait, wh- wh- when's your cycle? How's your cycle set up? Oh, did you start feeling those symptoms around that time? And that's how they pieced it together. But uh, the book is pretty interesting. I'm talking about the uh, before we switch back. Oh, yeah. Mm. I'm talking about that book, The uh, Deadliest Enemy <clears throat> and how I'm learning how like they came up with the name for AIDS and how oh, they mm-hmm. like i'm not there yet but yeah you gotta catch up so um anyway before mighty soul took a break um we were talking about how they're gonna open the economy back up and how they're gonna you know keep it going and keep everybody on the mindset of hey <clears throat> hey these unemployment numbers that they throwing at y'all do the math and look at the percentage because it might not be as scary as they're making a scene. Yeah, and I guess that's my question. You know, like, that's what I was trying to say. I was like, so when people start to go back, one, uh, one, is mm-hmm. is now the employer going to, like, make it a point to test everyone who comes back, right? Also, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? Two, I'm assuming that employer or whatever it is, if it's a mom and pop shop, they may not be able to open, right? So we don't know if they're going to be reopened. Yeah, I was saying that that a lot of businesses are going to get hit really hard. And the bigger corporations, how many people are they going to hire again or, or, or bring back? Because a lot of people were, what is that called, furlough or whatever? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So are those are all those people that were furloughed, are they going to be able to come back? Like, are there is their job guaranteed, I guess is my question. Or is it just like you may or may not be able to come back. So, for example, the place that I interpret for, I think mm-hmm. I talked to you about this the last time. So it looks like the people who got to stay at the job were based on, like, uh, tenure. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Like, how long you'd been there. So my client has been there now for, I think, 14 years or 15 years, something like that. So he's one of the people in the warehouse that got to stay Mm -hmm. Um, along with the lead and another guy. So there's only three guys working in the warehouse. And the only reason that other guy got was able to, because they needed help because Mm -hmm. obviously the two people who have been there the longest can't do all the work by themselves. Mm -hmm. Technically they were only going to leave them two. Mm. They decided to do three so that one can be working in each little department that they have in the warehouse, Mm -hmm. but it's still a lot of work for one person. Mm Mm-hmm. They're also having to be given this uh, form that says that because they get out at 1130. So some people don't live just 30 minutes away from their house. So they have to drive around with this form that says that, you know, I just got off of work. My shift is three. You know, I'm three, uh, 3 p.m. to 1130 p.m. But I'm on my way home, blah, 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 blah. So don't find me or give me a ticket or whatever. Anyway, my point is that company there. Are they bringing everyone back? Are they bringing their sales department back? Are they bringing back the drivers? Are they bringing back everyone that's in the warehouse? Are they are they going to re- realize like you said like they were having this conversation yeah. yesterday on the news like are they going or, or was it on Joe Rogan I think Which is where what? they were talking about where they were saying like a lot of people are going to realize like wait y'all can stay at home and work and we don't have to pay office space yeah. we don't have to like. Mm-hmm pay all this shit that we pay right now. You know Mm -hmm, what I'm saying? mm -hmm. And um, are they going to find it easier to to work this way where not very many people are commuting? Now there's less pollution. You know what I'm saying? So is, like you said, I think a lot of good things are going to end up coming out of this, out of this mess. And it's because, it's because, you know, human beings are, are innovative and human beings know how to solve problems. So it's not like, it's not like, oh, thank you, virus. But it's kind of like, well... We're going to come out stronger. That's for sure. It's going to be transformative. That's for sure. That way, when the next virus comes, all these world leaders understand that, hey, man, all this, uh, the tanks and the missiles and the nukes and the, you know, anti-terrorism and anti, all that's cool. But this enemy is invisible. This enemy don't discriminate. And it's a global enemy. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Versus like, you know, we just got to watch out for this country or this motherfucker over here got a nuke. It's, you know. You can't just spend all your money on bullets and 
and helicopters. You're going to have to spend some on vaccines and, and masks and ventilators and shit like that. I'm not really a Twitter person, and I don't really even know why I was on Twitter last night. Oh, because I think I got an alert that said uh, that the president was going to speak live. Okay. And so I was watching that thing. And so, you know, how I was telling you, I'm like, those comments on there, people are like, just like, I never get that. Like, if you don't like someone, one, why do you follow them? <laughs> Uh-huh. You know, I don't have enough time in the world to just be leaving bad comments on uh-huh. people's fucking accounts. I just don't follow you if I don't like you. You know okay. what I'm saying? So it was or, bad comments to the so president? A bunch of bad comments to the president. But one of them on there said, uh, and I meant to tell you about this. Uh, it said on there, yeah, China's going to definitely uh, like stir up a war between the U.S. and China. Like that they that it was like, get ready for that. Well, th- we're already in a trade war with them. Mm-hmm. Like from the time, I think from the time Trump was campaigning. He was already talking shit like, look at our deals with China, like the fucking trade deals. These motherfuckers. I mean, we're going to have to sever ties with China because, number one, all the meth, all the chemicals that the cartels use to, to pump into the U.S., it comes from China. That's why the, the dope game's hey, fucked even up. Even the cartels yeah. are hurting during this fucking quarantine, Even bro. Even ISIS told their little terrorists and shit like, hey, bro, wherever the fuck y'all at, stay over there. Don't bring that shit back to the cave. FaceTime me. Like, don't come back and report and give me no report. You know, don't. I don't want to see you. Stay where you at. <laughs> Wait till the Rona passes by and we get back to acting yeah. a fool. But um, but we're talking about, like, how we're going to be more prepared next time. And and just there's going to be apps built and we might have to sacrifice some privacy. But if you think about it. Well, I don't think we really have privacy anyway right now. Well, to be we, honest with we you. have a whole lot more than then it, what's coming. Like, for instance. All it would really take is a little facial recognition and a little snooping on your phone type of thing as to like where you at uh, somebody around you. Did they have Corona or did we hear you cough like have a little A.I. listening in you, to your fucking microphone or, oh, we saw you were at spring break and now you back at home in Ohio. OK, so I want to see that video that you were talking about yeah, because on Twitter because I haven't seen it um, because even Christina P was talking yeah. about that, too. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm curious to see that. But it's so crazy because it's a lot of it had to do with what you said. Miami was probably thinking uh, this is our money week. Like Economy. we're not going to shut down it's spring, fucking break. spring break. This is when we make our money. Our city makes their money yep. during this time. Hotels, restaurants, bars. Everything. It's popping. You know what's funny, though? I never went to Miami for a spring break. Did you? No. Same. Um, in my rap days, we've might have been out there while it was spring break but uh, it wasn't okay. me being in college no okay no. see i never did my my thing for some reason which i now that i think about it I'm like why didn't i go to miami to spring break but i'd always go to south padre like that was yeah, the spot we did that. We did i south guess padre, it's because yeah. i guess college That's station texas, texas yeah. i don't know but i'm thinking like right now i'm like man i remember being so depressed when i was gonna like graduate college and i was like fuck that's it like no more spring break like there's no more breaks when you're an adult that's it there's no more fucking breaks. There's no summer, no nothing. They might give you Christmas off. And I was like, son of a bitch. And then that's when we started making DVDs and doing some crazy Girls Gone Wild type shit and going to New Orleans and going to uh, South Padre and all the car shows. And, you know, back then, people used to act a fool because not all the phones had cameras. So well, yeah. And you know what's funny? How yesterday when we went live on Facebook where mm-hmm. um, that one um, fan asked when they called in and said, how does your fi- wife feel? We, we, you didn't touch on that. You only touch on the part where like, yeah, I thought about what it was going to do uh, to like when my kids grow up, uh-huh. if they ever saw this, what mm-hmm. I would say, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Stuff like that. It's funny because to me, um, everybody just always assumes one that I'm jealous. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm saying? Everyone always assumes that, uh, I travel with you only because I don't want the groupies to be all over you. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Everybody assumes that the reason we work together is because I guess I'm some kind of insecure bitch. Really? That's pretty funny because uh, that's an interesting subject because they don't know that uh, like you're there to make the shit run smooth. You're dealing with the club. Yeah. You know, you're, like you're doing selling the total merch. opposite. Listen, you're if assisting someone with the fan. Exactly. If someone is being a, a bopper and they're like trying to holler at Chingo, I probably wouldn't even know until after the show because somebody might have mentioned it like did you see that girl doing blah 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 but honestly to be honest with I you I shut it down <laughs> but my thing behind it is is that going back to that part babe it's funny because to me I feel like it's a history of you and I actually love the fact that it was you does that make sense like the fact that you did do Manosa's going wild you know uh-huh. what I'm saying because it's like the crazy time where for me it's like 
okay, I don't know that I ever will tell Penelope or Mickey any of my crazy stories, right? <laughs> but I know that they're there, and it's like your crazy stories were this, except you actually documented it. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And it's there. So for me, it's like, no, this is part of his history. Like, this is who he was back then. And if the girls were to ever ask, like, Dad, why would you do that? It's like, well, also, like, this was a different, you know. I was a documentarian. Yeah. <laughs> it, there was a cause. It was the history of twerk. Hey, you know, we where were, twerk was invented. He was trying to make money. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like a business. It's more of a business. Uh, I'm like, well, I'm like, well, shit, girls gone wild doing it. Like, fuck. It, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm. My point is, so it's my, my point. My point with that was just about spring break not being the same. But going back, you were like innovative. Mm-hmm. And you were doing a lot of shit that they're doing barely now. You know what I'm saying? The mm-hmm. kids are doing now. It's like recording shit. And you were like yeah. back I mean, then already yeah, kind of doing it. If it was a car show and there's like a, or if it's like a nightclub, they're doing like a twerk contest or something. I mean, there's like, that's around the time cell phones started be- coming with cameras and shit. So it's like 50 cell phones in the air. So it's kind of like, you know. Okay. So I never forget this. The whole club got footage. Uh huh. My- my i forgot who it was we went to the club it was like some, i actually i didn't know this girl this girl was a friend of the friend that was hanging out with us does that make sense so the it's a friend one. of a friend yeah it was a plus one well we went to the club and i didn't know the plus one was there getting ready for to do the wet t-shirt <laughs> contest thing or is that what it's like uh-huh. yeah and then anyway so she's like come on let's all do it and that way there's less chance of like girl, the girls winning. If we're all together, we can split the money. <laughs> and then, I mean, she was really trying to do this, like sell if this one pitch. Of y'all win, we so all split like it. yeah, we like we still have a chance. And I was like, uh, no. Was she like at least decent looking or anything like that? Or? You know, it's one of those girls who has the butter face. <laughs> like her, okay, it's the kind Ooh. that you just put a, a pillow over her face. Ooh, but her body was banging, bro. Like if I were a guy, I'd be like, well. If she, she puts on makeup, win. you know, if she puts on makeup, she'd be. If she wears a, 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 ma- a Corona mask. Yeah. <laughs> like her eyes are pretty, you know, type of thing, you know, like teeth are fucked up. You know Ooh. what I'm saying? Like it was more of a big teeth type mm. of thing. And like the, it's like she she could close her mouth. Her She wasn't like the teeth weren't sticking out. But her body, bro, I ain't going to lie. And the thing is, she didn't even have to work for it. Like she was naturally built like that. You know what I'm saying? And um, she eat junk. I'm sitting there like looking at her. I still have to watch what I eat, and she's all eating whatever she wants at taquerias late at night. I'm like having one taco. She's like having five, and I'm like, "Wow, you eat like that, and your body still looks like that." Jesus, must be nice to be you. But anyway, it was crazy because we were going to the club. I had no idea this what her intentions were, and she like literally sat there in the bathroom trying to plot it out, and I was like looking at everybody. And were they, was she everybody's, persuading? Everybody's face was like almost looking like they were getting convinced. And I was like, I'm not doing that. Well, number one, I don't even have boobs. Okay. <laughs> and number two, like they're going to laugh and be like, ma'am, with the ant bites, please get off the stage. Ma'am, with the ant bites, please get off the stage. They're like you should have ate two tacos. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it was like one of those things. I was like, I'm not doing this. So whoever is going to agree to do that. That's on you. That's on you. So I'm leaving this club tonight knowing that all I came out to do was have a good time and a drink. And I'm not here to take off my fucking shirt and let it get wet so that (laughs) some fucker can think he can touch on you just because, you know, that. So anyway, spring breaks were still kind of crazy, though. And that's kind of how they went down. So it's funny that that question happened yesterday because I was thinking about it like on our Facebook live, which we call Cafecito Time. You should tune in. Which is almost time for that. Yeah, we've, yeah. So, anyway, I guess this is a really good conversation starter. We should probably make a part two of it, Mm -hmm. of it, because then I wanted to ask, like, wanted to ask you, so with with everything that he asked yesterday, right? Like, what, how do you, how do you, Mm -hmm. how do you plan to tell the, you know, your kids about, Mm -hmm. about that when they get older, if they Mm -hmm. were to see it, or, you know, you having girls on, like, how are Mm -hmm. you going to explain all that, being that you have two girls? Like, I also wonder, like, how long in a relationship does it take for you to get comfortable with someone where you start to being able to tell them, like, your darkest secrets? Oh, wow. I guess it just depends on the connection. And, it, you know, for some people, it's like if the connection ain't there. Shit, y'all could be together 50 years. 
and it just depends on the person if they even feel like that even matters or they want to Because I feel like we all have skeletons in our closets that we probably have never talked to our other half about, mm-hmm. right? So I'm wondering how many people out there, because of this quarantine, there's almost like nothing to do but talk to your partner. Now's now, a good time. Now is a good time, right? <laughs> like, are you going to tell, like, are, have you thought about like, you know, as you journal through the day, right? Journal about your day or you kind of think about your day. Are you also thinking about like, I really don't get along with this person. Like, are you starting to analyze your relationship? Well, are you starting look, to feel I mean, like, you know, I, I can't relate. Um, I know I made a right choice and, you know, I'm married. I tricked her. I trapped her. She's locked in. She got, he got me pregnant on purpose. We good. We, we locked in. But, um, but I can only imagine depending on like, like, you know, I'm 40. But if I was, let's just say, 21, shacked up with somebody, you know, the corona's happening. And if I just have all my little internal, like, you know, you're, you're young and dumb and you haven't even faced the man in the mirror. You haven't even evolved or grown up. Then, yeah, I could definitely see it being like a ticking time bomb with a relationship. Like, ah, bitch, I can't handle this. Because I feel like in the survival mode like position that you're in. Yeah, this fi- survival mode that you're in, mm-hmm. right? Right now, because you're having to survive together. Especially you're if you're to button work heads. Together. If you're button heads, fuck exactly. That. So during this time, I really wonder like, are a lot of people analyzing this other person and thinking about, like, this bitch can't survive? Fuck. She's slowing we me can, down. We cannot survive I, together. If shit hits the fan and I'm like, grab the bug out bag. We, we jump in the back fence. We meet me at the corner of Alabama. And, you know, it's like, well, why? why but who's gonna be there yeah who's gonna be there for what i don't know i'm thinking maybe ah you know what peace you know (laughs) and it's funny because um i i always say i wish i would have met i mean i did meet you when i was younger but i'm saying Mm -hmm. like i wish i would have met you before so we could have been together longer if that makes sense Mm -hmm. right but i love this the the stage that you and i met in because i feel like we were both kind of mature and we had already kind of been maturing but Still, man, it was still I think about that. <clears throat> it was like I had just came back from L.A. I was out there while well, I was back and forth, but I was out there for a year. And um, I just it, it reminds me of this quarantine a little bit. Like I get little flashbacks because in the beginning, when I was first in L.A., like I didn't even have a gym membership because uh-huh. I, I was just like, look, man, you're trying to just find your apartment or wherever you're going to stay and, you know, just jog just to get your yayas out and maybe do some little push-ups or whatever. And I was shipping out some shirts and hats and I was going downtown and picking up more, uh, you know, blank stuff for the merch and hitting the studio. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Just really like staying, what's the word? Staying sane, you know? They're trying to be busy. And, and trying stuff, to figure yeah. out, like figure out like, okay, what the fuck am I doing out here? Um, what is this sacrifice about? And then eventually when I did move to East L.A., I did sign up at a gym over there in that area. And uh, one day I show up and it's fucking shut down. Oh, shit. I just show up and they're just like, yeah, there's just like a little sign that's like, yeah, dude, peace. They went out of business. Aww. But but I don't even know how I got on that subject. But uh, Oh, you were talking about being mature. I was like, nah, I think back. And even when I first got back, when I was like, okay, not single dad or whatever the term is, but it's like, okay, I got, you know, I got, I got a kid. I'll have her from time to time. I'm trying to figure that out. Just her, how to entertain her, how to educate her and wh- feed her. What do I pack in her lunch? What does she eat? Mm-hmm. What kind of stuff do I need to, you know, snacks and stuff. And, um, so yeah, I was, uh, it's night and day just from, what was that? About six years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Approximately. That shit went by fast. Six, seven years ago. Six, boo. Okay. Well, I was in L.A. probably about seven years ago then. And we were supposed to be there all summer, but my shit got postponed. Burr, 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 burr. I Pinche, know. Going viral tour, laid off. Mas, mas que la chingada, wey. I miss I miss the stage, but I love being home. So thank you guys for tuning in today. It's your boy Chingo Blingo with the Part big Part two next week, guys. Send us a message. Let us know how you guys are handling this quarantine. Like, are y'all surviving it? Are you analyzing your partner? Are you thinking like, fuck, what did I do? Uh, How'd I end up with this person? Um, Yeah, relationship advice. If you have questions about that, give us a call. 409-233-3459 is 409-233-3459. Babe, say it right. 409. There you go. 233-3459.
<laughs> like that? 409-233-49. No, 34-54-59. There you go, guys. 409-233-3459. All right. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And, and thanks to all the patrons for supporting the podcast. Hit up patreon.com forward slash Chingo Bling and become a VIP member. Sass. Bye. Next time we'll talk about Tiger King. Peace. <laughs>